Howdy, and welcome back to Bikini Bottom. You know, when a scene in a show gets hidden away, the reasoning behind why this happened tends to really fascinate me. So I thought we could talk about some of the more controversial deleted scenes in Spongebob and why they were removed. Weird topic maybe, but I'll take any excuse to talk spongy. For some of these scenes, the creators have told us why they were deleted, but for some, it's a bit more unknown and I'll just speculate as best I can. The reasoning can often come down to something being inappropriate for the show. Or maybe the Bikini Bottom residents do something that's considered too easy for viewers to imitate. Or they're considered too out of character behaviors for Spongebob and his friends. Sometimes the scenes are just thought to be too disturbing and unpleasant. So let's check out the 10 Spongebob deleted scenes. Also, apologies in advance if I don't have much good footage of some of these deleted scenes, as some of them never even aired. But if I don't, I'll try my best to use storyboard images or just footage from the episode it was deleted from. Anyway, on to the countdown. Number 10. Someone's in the kitchen with Sandy. Someone's in the kitchen, I know. This episode is pretty notorious. It's considered one of the absolute worst Sandy episodes. And it certainly left a sour taste in my mouth too. We mostly spend the episode seeing Sandy humiliated in front of the town. What in Neptune's ocean is that repulsive thing? That's Sandy, Plankton. And shame on you. She looks perfectly fine. Besides, who are you to judge, you green deformed amoeba? You see, Plankton steals Sandy's fur coat. And poor Sandy is forced to strut around the town in her underwear looking for the culprit. The deleted part? Well, originally Sandy was going to be completely naked. No bra, no swimsuit, no nothing. But her design was later revised from this and they gave her her underwear back. As a result, you may have noticed a gaping plot hole in the episode when you first saw it. Everyone's calling her naked, despite the fact she's still wearing her underwear. Look at a naked chipmunk! A hairless goat! A nudist ferret! I mean, if she popped down to the beach to sunbathe, she'd look perfectly socially acceptable. There were some minor other scenes deleted too. Like originally, Sandy covered herself up with a construction cone and caused a construction accident. And originally she found a clothing store and tried to buy clothes, but no clothes, no service. <laughs> Which is actually a pretty funny joke. And for number 9... The Spongebob movie, Sponge on the Run. You'd be surprised how many deleted scenes there were during Sponge on the Run's development. Originally they had some really cool ideas that I would have loved to see what happened. Check this out. Originally, this was going to be a hybrid live-action animated movie. A return to that Who Framed Roger Rabbit style of movie. And I personally think that would have been awesome to see. King Neptune would have been human like you and me. And we would have had these dark creatures as his minions. Apparently, originally, Neptune stole Gary and attempted to clone him. But Paramount rejected the idea, thinking that a movie set in Atlantis would underperform. And after Atlantis Square Pantis, who can blame them? It actually gets even weirder though. The next plot was a science fiction approach with giant cats as the villains. Giant mecha cats smash through the city, chasing SpongeBob and Patrick down. How awesome would either of those stories been instead? I like both these setups way better than the generic King Neptune we got instead. I don't mind the characters we ended up with, but these would have been way more interesting. <sighs> I guess the creative route isn't always the safest route, but believe it or not, it actually gets even more crazy. Their other plan was to have SpongeBob, Patrick, Sandy, and Squidward visit whole different worlds, such as a futuristic world inhabited by dolphins. But this one was scrapped for being too far-fetched. Because, you know, Spongebob is never too far-fetched. But to be fair, in an interview with Tim Hill, they said, Steven Hilberg was always a bigger fan of the more grounded, relatable plots. And I can respect they went with a simpler option to try and do what Steve would have wanted. In terms of deleting scenes, there were also some much better choices for what they deleted as well. Like originally, the Camp Coral flashbacks were at the start of the movie, so we could have never escaped them. But I guess they realize they'd get away better with their barefaced sham of an advertisement at the end of the movie, because, you know, that works so much better. And originally, Gary did droppings in his litter box. But I guess this was seen as too, ew, snail dropping, so they got rid of it. Yeah. Now we know where he is. A lot of deleted scenes here and there, but overall, I was okay with what we ended up with. This King Poseidon sounds like a tough customer. Oh, oh yeah. Tough. Number eight. Truth or Square. Probably the most notable deleted scene they had in this very weird SpongeBob special was from the SpongeBob and Sandy wedding. 
Originally, the priest would say he didn't know the wedding was a play, to which SpongeBob replies, it doesn't have to be, which causes Sandy to slap him. While we don't have any confirmation, I personally think it's pretty clear why this scene was removed. It takes away any early season doubts that SpongeBob loves Sandy romantically. Though mind you, we did find out later in a very unusual way, after SpongeBob is splattered by a truck in a mobile game. Yeah, Sandy, I love her. And plus, I think it'd be pretty out of character for Sandy to slap SpongeBob for admitting he cares about her. If they were doing karate, she might slap him. But in this situation, I imagine she'd say something more like, Aw, SpongeBob. I now pronounce you Sponge and Squirrel. Number 7. To love a patty. It's no secret that SpongeBob really likes his Krabby Patty burgers. In all my years of fried cookery, I have never seen such a lovely group of patties. But originally in this episode, we learnt just how much he really likes Krabby Patties. Spoiler, it's a lot. Your beauty must be preserved. And no judgement, but he's clearly got some sort of meat fixation kink going on in this episode. And originally, in the deleted scene, he took the next step and woke up next to the Krabby Patty in his underwear. Now to start with, how the anatomics of this work is absolutely none of my business. You do you, buddy. And if you don't mind me getting Freudian for a moment, I believe these personal fixations are due to a projection of suppressed interest of his female friend Sandy. These unique fixations might not be such a focus for Spongebob if he just admitted his feelings to his friend. Anyway, as you can guess, this scene was later deleted and just toned down to them having a picnic to remove any sexual undertones. Are you alright, Patty? You don't seem so hot. Personally, I still think this is a really stupid episode, but it's an interesting little tidbit of information to know just how far they were planning to go with Spongebob's fixation on fried meat. This isn't a piece of meat, Mr. Krabs. She's Patty. Number six. Just one bite. Originally, when Squidward awoke from his dream of marrying a Krabby Patty... Honey... He originally said, I have to get my hands on that Krabby Patty, and no one's gonna stop me. <laughs> I hate Krabby Patties. As for the rest of the scene, well, good news. You don't have to put up with my terrible SpongeBob impressions for this one, because I have the footage right here. Check it out. All I have to do is... Wait, it's too easy. There must be some kind of... Security? This is our burglar alarm? A bucket of water? <laughs> Squidward kicks the door open and spills a bucket of liquid. But he sniffs the liquid and realizes... Hey, this isn't water. This is... Gas! A robot arm drops the match into the gas, resulting in a huge explosion. Squidward enters the kitchen, setting off another burglar alarm. The kitchen bursts into flames. Anyway, you might be wondering why they deleted this scene. Well, Nickelodeon was very against the idea of a gag involving a match and gasoline. Take it from someone who's almost seen two friends blown up by leaving the gas on. It's not for kids to play with. And I think this one was a little too easy to imitate. My guess is the Krusty Krabs uses electric stoves. And I do the same. I can't stand gas ovens. They're way too dangerous. Dangerous. Anyway, I suspect the episode also had really bad timing. You see, this episode originally aired on October 2001, a month after one of the most tragic, shocking events in American history, 9-11. A lot of people were still in shock, and they didn't want to use any explosions at the time. I think they also called it a US television standards and practice issue, but anyway. This scene was effectively removed from almost every DVD box set, even my own first 100 episodes though. That being said, even without the scene, I think this was still a really funny episode. Does this look unsure to you? No. Good. Number five. The SpongeBob movie, Sponge Out of Water. According to Crab's voice actor Clancy Brown, the film was a lot different from the first because almost all aspects of it were controlled and monitored by executives from Paramount. It really sounded like very difficult conditions for the SpongeBob team to work under. Because apparently these executives were, and I quote, leaning over everybody's shoulder, saying what should and shouldn't be done. In fact, a lot of the executive changes to Sponge Out of Water were designed to improve marketing. For example, 
Originally, Sponge Out of Water was meant to be completely 2D animated, but the executives insisted on having CGI sequences. And as you might remember, they played up these CG scenes a lot in marketing the movie. He's teaming it up with a wacky straw topper from the SpongeBob movie. They also removed almost every scene involving Pearls and Mrs. Puff, apparently because they were less popular than Sandy. Both Pearl and Sandy are characters I really enjoy in the show, so I was a bit split on this one. But probably the most significant change was an entire song they deleted from the final film. It's a song Spongy and his friends sing called Thank Gosh It's Monday. The first thing you pictured there, that's pretty much the song. SpongeBob singing just how much he looks forward to Positivity Monday. And I'm all for appreciating the silver lining of what can be a very stressful time for many, so I think I would have been okay with this song. If you're curious, I'll link the original song in the description. Another interesting scene was where they served out nasty patties to customers. You know, the one that poisoned the health inspector? Basically, SpongeBob loses his ability to make proper patties and ends up making nasty patties. Are those patties done? I think so, yes. I don't know! I don't remember, Mr. Krabs! In desperation, Krabs serves them to the refund-demanding customers. Oh, I wouldn't call these Krabby Patties exactly. And it uh, doesn't go well. In fact, they vomit all over Squidward. Uh, no surprise, sources say this scene was removed for being too gross. Their words, not mine. They thought it wouldn't be pretty if a customer ate a nasty patty after all these years. But despite a lot of corporate oversight, I think the movie turned out okay. You're okay in my book. Aw, oh, shucks. And for number four... Scaredy Pants. This one had a pretty controversial ending, when the Flying Dutchman arrives and reveals Spongebob's costume. If you don't remember the episode, basically what happens is, Spongy's really excited about Halloween and tries his best to dress up to scare people, perhaps trying a little too hard. You might remember, he essentially turns himself inside out, with his brain exposed. No surprise, this terrifies the Dutchman and the entire Krusty Krab restaurant. It worked, Patrick. I scared everybody. The censors must have got cold feet, though, as originally there was going to be a close-up of SpongeBob's shorn-off face. I tend to agree with most other speculations on this. They thought this might be too scary for younger viewers. Little kids are easy to scare! Originally after this, the scene was meant to fade out to black, but apparently at the last minute they threw in SpongeBob saying, Don't worry, it grows back. <laughs> Frankly, I totally get this addition, because ending on a black screen of Spongebob essentially turning himself inside out might be seen as a little freaky for some kids. So Tom Kenny haphazardly adding the lines, Don't worry, it grows back, makes a lot of sense. As they probably wanted to remind kids, Spongebob will be perfectly fine by the next episode. Let's go scare somebody. And for the third Spongebob deleted scene... Sailor Mouth. You might remember this as the episode where Spongebob and Patrick start swearing up a blue streak. Hello, customers! Nice day we're having, huh? Though my friend Jem had an interesting theory that maybe they were just talking like dolphins. And dolphin speech is just seen as horrid in Bikini Bottom Society. But as much as I like this theory, this episode's deleted scene kind of squelches that theory. Because according to the episode's audio commentary, they originally planned to have a scene of Spongebob saying, Go yourself, followed by Patrick saying, Well, yo too, during their eels and escalators game. You can probably guess why this part was removed. These two lines destroy all subtlety to the episode. And I imagine hearing Spongebob say, Go yourself, was seen as a little too easily imitated by younger viewers. Number two. The original Spongebob Squarepants movie. Ooh. Now this is actually my favorite Spongebob movie. And there were a lot of fun little tweaks they took out of the movie. You know those pirates at the start of the movie? If you're anything like me, you probably felt like something was sorely missing from them. Or someone. Namely, Patchy the pirate and Potty the parrot. Oh, hey boo. Yeah, you're not a, not a parrot, but it's good to see you. Originally, Patchy was meant to lead the pirate crew. I order you to walk the flag! I mean, who else would take them all to SpongeBob the movie? You what? 
frankly, I would have loved to see Patchy in this movie. But in the final film, he was replaced by Captain Bart the Pirate. This left me wondering, why would they ever take Patchy out? Well, I forget this sometimes, but Patchy has a kind of niche appeal. According to showrunner Vincent Waller, they thought the intentionally low production values on Patchy might scare the quote-unquote movie folks. I definitely get this decision, but it's still a shame. Because to me, Patchy felt like the missing piece from the original Spongebob movie. Tom Kenny as Patchy the Pirate was a familiar face I wanted to see greet me at the start of the movie. Why not just put Patchy in a decent costume? Anyway, there are a whole lot of more minor changes to this movie too. Small things, like Spongebob referring to the Goofy Goober staff as bartenders when he asked for another drink. Waiter, let's get another round over here. My guess is they scrapped this line because it's too related to uh, alcohol consumption at a bar. Another interesting change is when Spongy and Patrick escape Shell City. Originally, they were going to encounter Sandy in a real-world city, and she looked like a real-life squirrel. Patrick was so adverse to this that he vomits in disgust. And if that wasn't bad enough for Sandy, she's also at the same time getting pursued by squirrel exterminators. Cheapest. The writers really had it out for Sandy in this movie. She's clearly not welcome. It makes you wonder why she came back to land to visit at all. Maybe she's got family in there. Makes sense. Anyway, there's one other big surprise Spongy and Patrick run into in the big city. Human versions of themselves. And frankly, I still think this would have been really neat to see. It's hard to even picture Spongy and Patrick as humans. So I guess for now, the closest we're gonna get is a trusty slap. All right, troops, prepare to be deployed. <laughs> And before we get to number one, let's go through some quick honorable mentions. Snowball Effect. This is the episode where Spongy, Patrick, and even Squidward end up in a snowball fight. Though originally, Squidward imagined taking things a little too far. Squidward originally imagined taking them to a snowman dungeon and saying, <laughs> I'll bring them to my snowman dungeon and extract their valuable secrets. You can probably imagine scenes of a torture room are a little too graphic for SpongeBob, so they didn't make it. Dying for pie. You might remember this episode as the one where Squidward thinks Spongebob is going to blow up. So they spend time together in what Squidward thinks is Spongy's last day on Earth. You might remember there was a kind of gross open heart surgery scene in this episode. Originally, Squidward asks, Are you sure you should be poking it like that? To which Spongebob replies, Who's the doctor here? Me or you? And blood ruptures out of Squidward's heart. Ugh. Nervously, Spongy plugs up the hole. While we don't have any sources, I think the reason this line was deleted is pretty straightforward. The writers didn't want to give kids the impression SpongeBob considered himself a doctor, even though he has no qualifications. And frankly, I think that's a fair call. Clams. Huh. Did you know originally we did get to meet Mr. Krabs' parents? You see, in this episode, Krabs finally earns his millionth dollar, to which he calls his parents proudly to tell them. Unfortunately, they're clearly quite dead, so there's not much they can say. Again, I don't have sources for this one, but I think the reasoning's pretty clear. It was probably seen as too jarringly dark a joke for younger kids, particularly very young viewers who might not even be introduced to mortality yet. Some kids might suddenly have some questions to their parents about why Mr. Krabs' parents were in the graveyard. But if you're curious, according to the gravestones, they were named Victor Krabs and Betsy Krabs. Procrastination. You might know this as the most relatable episode in all of SpongeBob, because SpongeBob very accurately shows what it's like to be distracted while you're trying desperately to get yourself into your work or schoolwork. Originally, for 13 years, three scenes were removed from this episode. That was back in October 2006. 13 years later, though, they were allowed back on Nicktoons. Better late than never, I guess. Originally, SpongeBob looks out the window and sees Patrick rubbing lotion on Sandy, who says, Come on, SpongeBob! Apparently this scene was removed because it looked like Patrick was unhooking Sandy's bikini. But I saw the original airing and I, I never got that impression. I just thought he was giving her a shoulder massage. Originally, Spongebob exercising was removed as well. Because get this, apparently Spongebob's nose moving up and down looked obscene. The third scene they thought was a bit too much was a scene of a car crashing into a wall. Apparently Nickelodeon feared the kids might try to imitate the crash? Well, yeah, fair enough. Though personally, I think most kids are smart enough to never try anything like that. Oh, yeah. Whatever happened to SpongeBob? Probably the biggest change to this episode was the removal of the Who Bob What Pants theme song, which I thought was a shame because this song legitimately made me smile when I saw it. Maybe they didn't want to mess with the original song? Beats me. F-U-N. 
I think this one's been mentioned before, but apparently Plankton originally pointed his gun out and said, so what happens if we shoot him? Pretending to fire his net like a rifle. SpongeBob responds, you don't shoot him. Again, I get this one. Firearms references in SpongeBob probably weren't looked upon well. Anyway, on to number one. And here's my number one favorite SpongeBob deleted scene. Red Mist from Spongebob and Random Land. Now to start with, I gotta say, I love this new episode. Almost everything about it, but whoa. This deleted scene caught me by surprise. So if you don't know, the Krusty Krab gets a delivery to Random Land which you can reach by walking around randomly. There's so much to unpack in this episode. For now, let's just roll with it and I'll review it at a later date. So as you might have guessed, Random Land is a place where seemingly anything can happen. Basically though, in this discombobulated backwards random world, originally SpongeBob and Squidward did indeed encounter something very random and unexpected. Just a heads up, very mild jump scare in this next scene. Now, if you're not familiar with creepypastas, you might be wondering what the Jeebus that was. That, my friend, was Red Miss Squidward. Based on a fan-made creepypasta horror story that makes Are You Happy Now look positively cheery. Needless to say, Nickelodeon very hastily backpedaled on including this scene, and it was hastily deleted. But how bold and cool of the SpongeBob creators was that? To try and include that scene, Seeing the Spongebob creators acknowledge the outside fan-made Spongebob world is frankly so fun. In that brief moment in this deleted scene, where Squidward stares back at a nightmarish Spongebob fanfiction mirror of himself. It's a shame though, because the scene was very quickly replaced with Squidward as an infant. Huh. But the SpongeBob crew really wanted to do a Red Mist reference, and to me, that's really cool. To quote the artist who drew it, Adam Paloian, pardon me, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, the show's crew wanted reference to a truly silly, trying to be dark fan fiction. I'm looking forward to discussing this strange but awesome episode further in another video. <laughs> Anyway, I'm normally pretty bothered by shows excessively cutting scenes, but I gotta say, I can see the SpongeBob crew put a lot of thought into whether to remove these scenes. And sometimes it's just time constraints. A quote I personally try to take on board all the time is, you're not done when there's nothing to add. You're done when there's nothing to remove. And I think that mindset's no exception here. And just a heads up, I'm definitely doing another SpongeBob video soon. I just had too much fun with this one. So if you like my SpongeBob vids, stay tuned. So until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll see you when I see ya.